I promise you that learning to unlearn will be the best thing you've ever done. You are the epitome of strength when you can look at yourself and your foundation and say, I don't know if this is working for me anymore. For a long time, I was feeling kind of apathetic about the space that I was in and I just knew I could create the life of my dreams as long as I kept working, kept hustling, kept pushing and learning. But it wasn't until I started consciously undoing old patterns that my life actually started changing and it started changing dramatically. I'm talking like within a span of just a year, it was that quick. My relationships got better. I moved cities. I changed the dynamic of my job. I found a passion that is near and dear to me. I've reduced my anxiety. I all around just feel more comfortable in myself, in my confidence, my spiritual growth. And even though it wasn't always easy, I've definitely learned a lot of things along the way. So welcome to my channel. My name is Kayla Sheree. And if you're interested in learning how to unlearn, just keep on watching. I can say with full confidence that the personal growth journey is counterintuitive. Everything that has actively changed my life has led me down a path of having to unlearn first, which led me to create my latest series, Unlearn to Upgrade, where I talk about some of the things I've had to unlearn on my own personal growth journey that helped propel me forward faster than I ever thought I could. And I'm sharing them with the hope that you can learn something from my lessons as well. So we're starting with episode one, unlearning. So the idea of unlearning can be kind of complex. Some of the stuff you'll find about unlearning on the internet can be a little contradictive because the term unlearning is usually used in business and academic settings where the knowledge is concrete and proven with numbers and statistics. That's why when it comes to a concept like personal or spiritual growth, you may have to unlearn what you know about unlearning. You cannot be for real. Oh my God, you for real. Unlearning doesn't mean completely forgetting what you were taught and forgetting everything you know up until this moment. That would just be forgetting. Unlearning simply means to reduce the influence or impact that your current knowledge has on the way that you are now. So you don't have to necessarily get rid of all the beliefs, habits, and mindsets that are ingrained within you, but what you do have to do is challenge them. Unlearning is basically saying, hey, I currently think and act this way under these particular circumstances. And then it's looking at those actions and thoughts in an objective way and saying, maybe that's not all there is. And then taking it a step further and said, if I chose to think or believe something differently, how would that serve my personal growth? Once you move forward and try out that new mindset, that new belief or habit, then comparing it to the old way and measuring your growth that way. And then from there deciding which suits you better. An example of this would be like when everyone started working from home and companies were eager to get back to the way that it used to be. Not taking into account that the new way of doing things may actually benefit more people than they realize. Where if the company was open to unlearning, they would consider what if we changed the requirements? What would that be like for our company long term? Then attempting to put it into practice and comparing the new way to the old way. So that's a way you can see how unlearning shows up in the physical world where we interact with one another. And I think personally that our communities are at a space where a lot of these unlearning challenges should be happening at a collective level. But that's besides the point. The question in this video is how can you learn to unlearn for your own personal and spiritual growth? Because I'm a firm believer that change on a large scale starts with the individual. So if you're looking to upgrade your life on a personal level, I'd like to introduce you to what I'm deciding to call my rule of 333. In order to unlearn successfully, you have to possess or develop three specific character traits, follow three requirements, and look out for the three phases of unlearning. So let's get into it. All right, so what are the three traits you need to make unlearning an easier process? Well, those three specific character traits you're going to need are humility, bravery, and curiosity, right? It sounds pretty simple. Well, the truth is most people believe they have these character traits down pat until it comes time to put them into use. Mm-hmm, I heard that. I wish I didn't hear that, but I just heard that. Most of us believe that we're brave until something comes along that makes us afraid. Like I thought I was super humble until I got into a relationship that challenged to me to see a different side of things. And I had to learn that, you know, I'm not always right, but 
or like even if I am right, that's not the only way to do something. But luckily you will be able to tell which traits you need to work on if you experience resistance at any time during the process. There are also three requirements necessary for you to successfully unlearn and upgrade your life. Along my personal growth journey, I learned that they are basically unavoidable. So when I go over them, pay attention to how you feel or if there's any mental or emotional resistance that pops up. And if you do feel it or think you might feel it when it happens, comment down below which requirement you might have a problem with. The first requirement is that you have to admit that you do not know it all. The first essential step in unlearning is being willing to admit that you do not know as much as you think you do, which is going to require a massive amount of humility. Honestly, not that many people like to admit that they don't know or that they were wrong because most of us believe that not knowing or being wrong is a bad thing, which basically represents a fear of the unknown. Because if we're wrong, we don't know the answer. And if we don't know, we don't know. The human brain likes to try and make sense of everything. The brain has something called associative memory, meaning that when we learn something new, our brains automatically link it to something that we already know, which is helpful because it helps us learn things faster and create fond memories and associations. The problem with associative memory is that it can create gaps in our knowledge. Example of associative memory, if I told you that cows produce more milk when they are in groups. <laughs> Your brain might be like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Or I knew that because when you saw cows before, they were always with other cows. But in reality, you didn't really know that unless you've raised cows or you've seen that statistic before or you've seen it in action. So you can see just with that fun fact alone where there would be gaps just in that little piece of knowledge. That's why this requirement is basically humility in action because you not only have to identify those gaps, but you have to admit that they are there in the first place. That brings us to the second requirement. You have to openly question the foundation of what you know. You have to challenge your own mindsets, beliefs, and habits. But specifically, you have to challenge the foundation of where they originate. You have to ask yourself why you are the way that you are which can kind of be terrifying. That's why bravery is important here because there's so many thoughts, beliefs, and actions that we adopted passively that we built our lives around. For example, if you follow a specific political party, that might affect like who your friends are or where you live. And questioning why you did all that and realizing that a lot of it is just passive information that we just accepted can be really scary. So you're definitely gonna have to tap into bravery for that one. And requirement number three, you have to align with the knowledge that best supports and serves your personal growth. You have to be curious, you have to ask questions, you have to consult the experts. And if you are the expert, you have to consult other experts. You have to consult beginners, you have to consult people with real life lived experience. You have to seek to fill in the gaps. You have to try going out and listening to another point of view without adopting it as your own. You have to accept that the beauty of life is that it's always changing and you have to embody that beauty too. You have to be the phoenix that you need to be and embrace it unapologetically. And once you do, you'll start to see your dream life take shape. So if you can agree to those three requirements, you are well on your way to unlearning the mindsets, beliefs, and routines that hold you back from living the life that you want to live. So when I first started researching unlearning, most of the rhetoric I found was how companies and large organizations are utilizing unlearning to support their future growth. And I came across an article that compared a couple studies and found that typically the unlearning phases happen in about three phases. I found some similarities and some differences that come with unlearning in the personal growth journey. And I kind of came up with three phases of my own that I've experienced during my journey of unlearning. So once you've got those three requirements down, you're okay with them, you accept and embody them, and you're ready to move on. There are three phases you can expect. If you want to check out some of the articles I found the most interesting, or you want even more detail about the rule of 333, check out the blog post. It's in the description box below on tendingyourtransformation.com. So the first phase is the destabilization phase. This is the phase that rocks your foundation. In corporate America specifically, this is the phase where a company realizes that their expectations and their reality are not matching up. For example, like a global pandemic that was only supposed to last a few weeks is now lasting months 
and they don't know what to do. But in the spiritual community or the personal growth community, most people would call this a tower moment. Oh my God! Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay calm! Wait, 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 wait. Everybody just calm down! Usually it's when you feel triggered or you feel emotional outbursts, you feel like you're in a crisis and all these suppressed feelings come up because your old way of being is causing you a lot of stress, strife, or pain. It happens when all your old routines and wellness habits aren't helping you get to where you need to go. It rocks your world and it can be pretty humbling even when you sought out to look for it in the first place. On the personal growth journey, this is usually after you do some shadow work where you dug into the deepest parts of yourself and sat with them for a while. I just want you to remember that when you do find yourself in this phase, it's not gonna feel good all the time and that is okay. It's not supposed to. It challenges your humility and it takes time. But once you put your pride to the side, and work through to the next phase, it will all be worth it, I promise. The next phase is the evaluation phase. This is after the dust has settled, your emotions have calmed down a little bit, you've now realized that the old way isn't working, that's when the evaluation phase hits. That's when you need to start asking questions, you need to get to the root of the mindset, the belief, or the habit, and you need to ask yourself why your brain made this connection in the first place. Why are you associating that mindset with that outcome? Why are you using that routine that doesn't work anymore? Why are you stuck in this old way of being? The best way to work through this phase is to journal and journal frequently. In corporate America and organizational leadership, this is where the company either gets rid of their old processes entirely, or it's when they double down and keep all their processes and hope that that destabilization moment is only temporary. And that's usually seen in companies that fail. So do that do with that. That's just a bit of information for you to do what you please. I think when it comes to personal growth, people that usually double down on their old beliefs and habits, even though they're causing them pain, usually tend to remain in the same cycle and never allow themselves to move forward. I believe that the best way to unlearn for personal growth is to break down the pieces of the thought, belief, or habit and find specifically which part needs healing. And it's important to always honor the old way of doing things because it shows you where you came from. The evaluation phase can also be a tad bit uncomfortable, especially if it's something you built your life around and it happens to be on faulty foundation. And the last phase is the experimentation phase. In the personal growth journey and the spiritual growth journey, this is where you try reprogramming your subconscious, adopting new beliefs, and creating new routines. The experimentation phase is the phase where you choose which direction you want your transformation to take. It's where you put yourself in new situations to learn. You challenge yourself with trying new things. It's the phase where you now have room to move around and explore, where you can consciously choose the belief that you want to have instead of the belief that you chose by default. The best part of the experimentation phase when it comes to unlearning is that it creates room for you to consciously choose the belief that you want to have over the belief that you chose by default. You become a lot more flexible and you lose that rigidity. And in a lot of cases, this phase lasts your whole life. So that is my rule of 333. If you liked it, make sure you like the video below, share it with your friends. If you're interested in keeping up with what I've unlearned on my personal growth journey, make sure you check out the Unlearn to Upgrade playlist and subscribe to keep up with the series. As always, I'm sending love and healing your way and thanks for watching. Bye!